Good day to you, one and all. I don't know what that means under these circumstances, but anyway, how's it going? Steve here. It is March 25th, 2021. You see, you know what that means? I got another story for you for today. But before we get to that, remember, as always, to help my little channel grow, what is going on? There have been police sirens for like the last 10 minutes just all over the place. Anyway, wanna help my little channel grow, blossom, Remember to like, share, subscribe, hit up my Patreon if you want to help me out that way. I'm always posting new stuff to there to give you more bang for your buck. The link to my Patreon is in the description below as well as the link to my Instagram and Facebook pages closely related to the content that I am producing here as well as my main channel, Steve the Amateur Historian. Go over there and give that a subscribe too. What else are you going to do with your day? Probably more than I am. So before we take off today, let me just stipulate, I was in no way paid by any tobacco companies to bring you the story that I'm about to bring to you. I hate cigarettes, tobacco, I hate all of it. It stinks, I don't wanna pull up my shirt and cover my nose whenever it's in my presence. I wish all cigarettes and tobacco and cigars and all that stuff would go off into a field somewhere and die. Let's just make that abundantly clear. And obviously I'm discussing today's story because of how ridiculous it is, but it makes so much sense considering the time period that it came from. The use of tobacco is the secret to my longevity. Those were essentially the words of J.H. Lee reported in a newspaper article from 1916. J.H. Lee had just turned 103 years old and he admitted that tobacco was the secret to how he had lived so long. You think somebody living to be over 100 back in 1916, that is no small feat. And <laughs> potentially the most tragic element of the story is that he acknowledged that he had been using tobacco since he was five years old. He literally said that he'd been using these products for 98 years. He'd been, I don't know if he was smoking out of a pipe, rolling his own cigar, I don't know what method he was using, but he was partaking, this is a man who was part, had been partaking of tobacco for nearly a century and was still alive. Again, I'm not advocating. Do a bunch of tobacco and you'll live to see old old age because a lot of you won't this guy was a diamond in the rough i don't know how this guy was still hanging on um i don't know what kind of tobacco he was using i don't know maybe he's using some of that organic stuff <laughs> but that was this story reported so jh lee lived as the article reported, about seven miles outside of Eugene, Oregon, which is about 105-ish miles south of Portland. And it's, it's surrounded by hills. So there's lots of little rural areas that people can live in. And that's where J.H. Lee lived. The article, you know, if, if the content wasn't already problematic enough, the article acknowledged that J.H. Lee was the third cousin of Robert E. Lee. Head man with the Confederacy, Robert E. Lee, one in the same. This guy was his third cousin, you know, 103 years old. It's, <laughs> this civil war has been over for 50 plus years now. And this guy's still just living his life. I could see him, you know, again, he lived a few miles outside of town. So I could see this guy living in kind of a rundown shack. He's just got, you know, it's like a one, one or two room shack. He's got like a stove to cook all his food and the stove's about as old as he is. He's got like a little beat up cot to sleep on. It's just not a whole lot going on. So yeah, so there was no end to the issues in relation to this particular story. You've got not just the the advocating of tobacco, tobacco products, but you've also got 
this idea that somehow you start using it young and you keep on using it and using it and using it, you'll, you'll live to see a hundred. And then, you know, we'll just sprinkle in, oh, this guy's the cousin of that Confederacy leader. No big deal, right? And yeah, Lee was born in North Carolina, lived most of his life pretty far from the West Coast. It said that right around the age of 100, he was living in Kansas and he moved all the way to Oregon. So imagine that. It's like, it would have been, I guess, around 1913 at that time. You're 100 years old and you're just loaded up into, uh, well, you're allowed to drink of water. You're loaded up into, I mean, I don't even know if they would have had a car at the time, 1913. They probably loaded up, maybe they took a train. Maybe they travel in luxury, but I almost see this hundred year old man and kin getting onto like a horse and buggy and just walk like, you know, traversing like it's the Oregon Trail for like you know, 1500 miles or something. But whatever the case, he got to Eugene and that's where he was residing. And he said, you know, I'm 103 now. I've been using tobacco for 98 years which again means he started using tobacco when he was five. I don't know, he may have even been four and a half, I don't know. But he also made the point, and here's where the story just kind of gets gets dumb. <laughs> because, the, the, the you know, the, the headline on the article, as well as the, you know, the start of the piece, you always throw all your good information out at the start of your piece, was, oh, this guy says doing a bunch of tobacco makes you live longer. And of course, it'd be quite a while down the road before people really started pushing the notion that, no, that is not accurate at all. He did mention that he never drank. He always abstained from liquor, the devil's juice. So that, I mean, that probably helped, but he also acknowledged that there was a pretty vast history of longevity in his family, which of course they saved that for later in the article, which is probably the real reason why this guy was still living at 103 was just, he came into this world built like a freaking tank, ready to take on anything. He expressed that, you know, other members of his family had lived to be over 100. He'd had one relative that lived to be 107. He had a sister who was 99 that was still alive at the time this article was released, who I think was still living in North Carolina. So this guy had longevity all over his lineage. So I'm starting to think, even with, it's still insane to think somebody's doing tobacco for almost a century. I mean, if he lived at least two more years, he would have been doing it for a century. I would hope I wouldn't even need to say it but just in case I do, uh, if you have a five-year-old kid, don't start giving them tobacco. It's not gonna help them live to 100. Don't, don't do it. I shouldn't have to say that, but I'm gonna say it because there's gotta be at least one idiot out there that might watch this video and be like, hmm, you know, my son's about to turn in five next month. I might wanna take up this, this steady diet of tobacco and whatever the heck else you're feeding your child. I'm kind of worried about what you're feeding your child if that's your mindset at that point. So yeah, it was just a classic piece of, you know, nonsense from long ago. You know, maybe tobacco really is good for you and maybe it really does. Maybe it is the key to longevity. Uh, no. Of course, you know, tobacco as people used it in 1916 is a little bit different than it is now, but still. I couldn't, I mean, just the fact that this guy had said he'd been, he was 103 and he'd been smoking tobacco since he was five, that was all I needed to jump onto this story. I didn't even know until I read a little closer that he was related to Robert E. Lee. That was just a, that was just a little extra cherry on the top of <laughs> this story of absurdity. Oh my God, don't use tobacco. That's all I'm gonna say. Shouldn't have to say anymore. 
but I am because we've come to the end of today's story. So I have to tell you that uh, thank you. I appreciate you watching. And as always, I want you to uh, remember to like, share, subscribe, hit up my Patreon, all those little things that help my little channel grow. And I'm constantly posting new extra things on my Patreon so you get a little bit of bang for your buck. The link to my Patreon as well as the link to my Instagram and Facebook pages related to what I'm doing here as well as on my Stevie Amateur Historian channel are all linked in the description below. Whew. And all that said, till next time, this has been Steve, and I'll see you tomorrow. I feel like that's gonna just annoy people over time. See you tomorrow. I know some of you are gonna end up hating that.